Welcome to Sensible Second Hand Classic, the series where we look at um, practical and sensible cars that you can buy between a budget of one and five thousand pounds. This is a 1976 Van der Plaat 1500, and it's not an Allegro. We will go over that pronunciation in a moment, but don't type anything in the comments right now because it will be removed. Is it any good? Should you care? Let's find out, shall we? So the Bandon Pla 1500 is a version of the Austin Allegro. It wasn't ever badged as Allegro though, so it would be incorrect for me to call it one. It just is based on the same design. These cars were launched in 1974. Um, after the previous generation, the Van der Plaat 1300 was discontinued. These Series 1 cars are very rare now because they only made them um, from 74 to 75 when the Series 2 came out. This is a Series 2. You could get a manual or an automatic, obviously, the sort of person who wanted the Van der Plaat would, um, would maybe want an automatic gearbox, but this is a 5 speed manual. Series 2 has actually got some changes from the Series 1. This car's got picnic tables, for example, that the original ones didn't get. Yes, a beige leather interior with wood mm. and an armrest. In 1979, when the Series 3 Allegro came out, um, having had construction finished at the Kingsbury Works in North London in July 79, the Van der Plaat was actually changed to the 1.7 and 1.5 litres. The um, 1.5 litre um, Series 3 actually got a bit more power. It had a, had a manual gearbox and I think it was like 78 horsepower actually, or twin carburettors. This is only 68 horsepower. The automatics were called the 1.7 and they had um, a 1750cc engine, which 372 horsepower. Unfortunately, production moved to Abingdon in July 79, just before the Series 3s came out. And because Abingdon closed in 1980, the Series 3s are really rare. There are a number of changes actually between the 1s and 2s, but the 2s and 3s are more difficult to spot. Let's talk about the name for a second. So, in the 1980s, when you used to see publicity material on video for Austin Rover at the time, and I think this was the same really for um, British Leyland. They used to call these cars Van den Plaat in the material. Now, the pronunciation that was used there is actually is actually not the only acceptable one. There are three acceptable pronunciations, and people tell me when I use this one that I'm wrong. Basically, I'm not wrong, and they're not wrong. It's basically the question of just picking whichever one you want because there are different reasons and perfectly legitimate reasons for, for using any of them, all three. And so the main thing to do is just to let somebody use whatever pronunciation they like, stick to it, and don't complain. And if you do complain about, about it, then the comments will be deleted because I've seen people arguing about this far too much and it is not worth arguing about. So, because my uncle in the early 90s had one of these in brown, sorry for the noise from the airport by the way, we're, we're quite close to um, Birmingham International here, um, I, I find this quite a sort of nostalgic thing. I, I've driven two Allegros before, obviously this isn't an Allegro, um, but um, yeah, just because cause it's the fancy version, this one's got a brand new vinyl roof on it by the way, it, it just a bit more nostalgic for me. Annoyingly those reversing lights don't work, um, you don't actually technically need them so that's okay um, and no fog lights because they weren't required until 1981. So yes you've got the sort of curvy boot as well, the uh, Series 3 sort of flat boot. In terms of the design, compared with uh, the Morris Meyer Traveller that Steve also has and I've just driven, 
Um, it feels so much newer, the design is so much newer. A lot of people don't really like the kind of position of the grill on the front and things like that to make it the Van der Plaar. But I personally do. Um, wind noise is not good, I'm afraid, either, so apologies for that. This car should have some sill trims on it. They've been removed because they were hiding an awful lot of rust. And because this is now going to, to a new owner um, next week, uh, the new owner is asked to not have the sill trims back on it. Um, it. It does need finishing off at some point, but this is um, the condition that Steve's got it to. Um, the new owner can presumably sort things out as well. But yes, this just reminds me of kind of like a a time when you used to still see these um, when I was growing up. They just weren't worth a lot of money. Um, but for a certain type of person, this was just exactly what they wanted. Let's just see if we can get in the back. Now, the Series 2s do have a little bit more room um, that I can fit in here. Hopefully, that will actually work. Let's move that out of the way. Look at all this. If you were sort of like a former captain in the industry or something like that, and you've been used to being driven around in a Daimler or something, then uh, here you go. You've got the, the full picnic table. It's actually quite useful. I mean, if you had a little like iPad or something in the back of here, you'd be fine. And we've got the, the burr walnut inserts, real wood. So is the dash. Headline has just been replaced because we used to have a sunroof. It doesn't have one anymore. Oh, thank goodness for Kangol Euroflex 5 inertia real seat belts. Yeah, the um, back of here has actually got a like, little padding on it as well. So if you sort of hit your head like that, it's fine. Steve's put a modern stereo in it and he's put some new speakers in there as well. I don't know, I just find this really, really charming. The seat's really comfortable, you sort of sink into it. And obviously because it's a Series 2, it's a bit further back. A very thick seat. Um, it's just really nice. This, this armrest is a bit useless if you've got a manual one though, because you can't change gear very well or put the handbrake on. But if you had an automatic, it might be handy. We've got ashtray action down here. I'm um, surprised there aren't more ashtrays in here as well because you'd expect the sort of person in here to be smoking a pipe or something like that if you own one of these. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. I, I do hope the person who's bought this enjoys it very much because I am enjoying myself too. Oh, this is a, it's just kind of a bit of me, this car, really. Um, let's close that properly. Oh, yes, yeah, so the Morris Marina door handles. <laughs> yes. And all kinds of other excitement. So we get in the front, and it's it's like a sort of sofa. This like a very posh leather sofa sitting in here, and we've got no rev counter. Amazingly, um, if you got the Allegro 1750 SS, you'd get something like that, but not in this one. There are the controls for the heating and ventilation, which are a little bit easier to understand than something like, you know, an ADO 16 or a Morris Minor or something like that. And, uh, yeah, you've got a 12 volt socket here, that's what I think we put in later. Secret mission documents are going here, no, no secret mission document storage. You have to put that in the uh, door pocket. Fog light on the right hand side, um, side and headlamps, panel lights and the uh, reheated window. Indicators on the right, wiper stock on the left. That's the way that um, I'm sure some of you like it. Um, I need to reprogram my brain every time I drive a car like this, but um, your opinion on that might vary. It's just, it's just such a lovely car to sit in this. It's so comfortable. I would prefer, though, maybe the Series 3 model, which had the um, um, sort of standard head restraints, which would just be a little bit safer. But yeah, it's not too bad. I'm going to have to ask Steve what some of these switches do because I'm not 100% sure what these uh, what these three actually do. I know what the rest of them do, but um, not so much those. But yeah, it's just so comfortable. It's actually leather on the door cards. Well, I think it might be leather on the door cards. Oh, viewers, I'm really glad that I've got the opportunity to actually drive this and film it before it goes to its new owner because, yeah, you don't see these every day. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet, shall we? Apologies once again for the wind viewers. So on the cars built before July 79, what would happen would be the body shells would be built uh, by 
by BL or Austin Morris, it says here. They'd be transported to the Kingsbury Works uh, in North London. They'd be finished off with all the Van den Pla bits, like the big grill and uh, the interior and sort of the rim embellishes this car's got. Series 2 cars do have quite interesting rim embellishes. They're actually worth quite a bit of money for some reason. Really skinny tyres as well. Um, fantastic. Look at that. Brake servo. Brilliant. 1.5 litre E Series engine shared with um, the Maxi. Maxis generally tend to be 1750s. Um, Allegro's tended to be 1.5s if they have the E Series engine. And the gearbox is in the sump. Um, it's classic sort of Alicus Gonis thinking, even if Alicus Gonis didn't actually design this car. So, yes, relatively easy to, to work on. Um, the Allegro Club International, I'm sure, would help you out with bits if you needed them. But one thing I would say is the wings. The reason they look a bit funny is because the bottom section of this wing, which was just sort of gone, uh, is actually fiberglass. You can buy Series 1 fiberglass wings, but not Series 2 wings. And so what Steve had to do was get a, a, a Series 1 fiberglass wing and, and bond these two together, which is why it looks a bit strange. So that's one thing to bear in mind. The rest of it's just a little bit of surface rust. Um, if, it was a, if it was a mint condition one, probably be worth seven eight thousand pounds as it is a car like this about four to five thousand pounds uh, which means we're comfortably within some second hand classics money on this car which is which is good he's also protected the sills with some stone chip as i say the sill trims are not currently on the car but yeah it just looks pretty simple to work on really um front wheel drive was still quite a big thing when the car was launched in 73 uh, obviously you know bmc had done it over 10 years before with the ADO 16s, so um, it's avant-garde really and then before that the Mini. So very familiar with sort of putting transverse engines in front-wheel drive cars by now. Right, I think that's uh, enough. Let's uh, just ask Steve a second and see what those other switches do. So I'm glad I asked. That is actually hazard lights. That is the control for the electric sunroof. Yes, electric sunroof in 1976, very fancy but no longer on the car. That is a manual override for the electric engine fan because if you get stuck in traffic on the way to a show in the summer, as I have done myself, um, you, and your car likes to overheat, that's probably the best thing to do. Love looking to boot. Um, <laughs> this car could have been engineered with a hatchback, I'm absolutely sure of that, but because of the internal politics which dictated that the Maxi was the only hatchback in the range, same thing happened later with the Princess, the Allegro was made into a saloon. Obviously you can get an Allegro state as well, I've just did one of those on my channel before, but yeah, quite a deep boot. Um, Jackson there and everything, spare wheel lives on this side. Uh, yeah, I just like the look of the um, sort of rib bit of it and of course the poshest badge that you could possibly imagine a car like this. So, this car actually, because of the extra sound deadening, it's, it's a lot quieter than, than, than many other sort of similar cars of a series of I've driven. Gearbox is, is nice enough, you just got to not rush the changes, which is common with transmission in some gearboxes. The only thing is, third, you've got to be really careful so you don't run the slot it, because it's very easy to run the slot third with one of these gearboxes, so we'll go back to second. A chap I know called Paul from the Paul's Yard channel, I did have one of these sort of briefly, he got it. Um, after Wheeler Dealers did one of these up, I think his one was an automatic. Sadly, he's actually sold that car now. Um, I was hoping to have a, a little go in that, but it never happened. It doesn't matter. I've got this one now, which is great. Let's try it over these bumps and see what happens. That's quite comfortable, actually. Hydro gas, obviously, on this car is, is in good condition. You do, you do need to watch that, actually. Um, there is a company run by a gentleman called Ian Kennedy who will sort out your hydro gas, your hydro gas suspension if, if needs to be. He's pretty good at it, from what I understand. My friend James Martin actually drove one of these in 2021. Similar to this, a little bit later, I think it was 78, the one that he drove. Also with a manual gearbox and in brown, without the vinyl roof. And you know, you know what, he actually quite liked it. <laughs> and I quite like this as well. This is 
there's so much a sort of thing that I like. Um, Van den Pla badge, um, you know, ultra luxury beige leather interior, servo assisted front discs, all synchromash five speed gearbox. You know, for a car that was launched in 1974, that's not bad in terms of specification at all. And, um, you know, it's not just the Van den Plaza got the five speed gearbox on the manuals. You get that on just the standard Allegros as well. So, you know, they're much maligned. Some people particularly think that these don't look very good with a big grill. I don't know, I, I just I just really like these. <laughs> if I can get used to the gearbox, I could just buy an automatic one and that would that would solve the problem, wouldn't it? But yeah, the ride is good. The hand leg's probably not the best. I mean, we'll go around this roundabout and see how much it leans over, which it probably will lean over quite a lot. Um, having driven two Legos before, the 74 Allegro that I drove, which is a Series 1 with a Corsic wheel on it. This, of course, doesn't have one. It could lean quite a lot. That's no, alright. It's fine. What's the problem? I've forgotten actually that in one of these we've got not just Wilton carpet, we've got extra sound deadening. That's why this seems a bit quieter than the Allegro Estate that I drove with this engine and gearbox in it. Hydrocast was revised on the uh, on the Mark II or Series 2 one of these. Um, but the chrome trim around the, the windscreen rear window is a bit thinner. On the um, Series 3s or Mark 3s, I, I can't it's very confusing because it's a Series 3 Allegro, but the official Van den Plaar Owners Club calls it a, like Marks 1 to 3. I don't understand what the difference is, but never mind. Um, I think the, the best way to tell a Mark 3 would be with the side repeaters and a flat boot lid. Um, and that you've got um, black interior door handles as opposed to these chrome ones. I've really enjoyed this car view, is it? <laughs> It's kind of given me more of an appreciation for like if you just give me a bit more luxury how happy i am um maybe you know that is something that is very shallow with me uh but those of you who've been around on this channel for long enough will know that um i like things like that particularly with beige leather interiors and wood anyway thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching please don't forget to subscribe to the channel like this video leave a comment below and um, we shall see you again very soon for some more recently priced nostalgic motoring. Time you